Here we go again with the Trademo Show with Matthias and Sebastian. Hello, everyone. Live from Denmark and Germany. <laughs> yeah. yeah. How are you today, Matthias? Ah, busy, busy, busy. But yeah, I'm I'm still good, good in shape. <laughs> <laughs> Very good. <laughs> yeah, I'm crazy busy too and uh, a bit stressed. But this show keeps me grounded. So it's a good thing for me to do this show. <laughs> um, <laughs> Yeah, so I'm hopefully becoming a dad this week, and at the same time, yeah, there's really a lot of work ahead for us here at Tredimo. Yeah. Interesting times, interesting times. We're redesigning a lot of things and speaking to a lot of people, and really a lot of interesting things are happening for our company at the moment. Mm -hmm. But so are so so it is also for other companies. And let's take a look at something that happened today. So we have today the quarterly earnings of Corning Incorporated and they happened um, about an hour ago. Uh, oh, Corning, okay. yeah. Pre-market, cool. Yep, it's a pre-market earnings release and um, what does this mean? So they're, they're basically after hours and pre-market um, earnings releases and also during the market. So some companies, they report their quarterly results Uh, simply while the stock market is open and others uh, report it before the market opens and again others that's mostly technology companies report it after the market is closed so the, in general, the majority of all companies reported the earnings uh, after market after market so. okay so the majority after market i find it actually a bit strange i would prefer it if all companies did it while the market is open but i guess it is um, done so that those that don't have time to follow it in real time and buy or sell their shares have like the whole night to think about it but then there has yeah there's now this after hours market where people are anyways trading after hours and then you wake up the next day and your stock can be up or down 20 percent or depending on the company between let's say just one percent and a hundred percent um okay now in this example here, Corning, it's a company that produces, for example, for your phone here the 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 um, the glass yeah? and also um, the yeah the fiber optics that for your new 5G network that you want to use probably sometime during the next two, three, four, five years, um, and um, depending on where you live, <laughs> and. Uh, We have this uh, stock in our um, Stradimo Tradimo account as well. Mm -hmm. Yeah, this is a company that is it's a conservative company paying regular dividends and so on. So usually you wouldn't expect like a big crazy story from this. But let's take a look at one of these reports just so you get a little bit of an understanding of what's inside. So how do you yeah. get this report? First question. I Basically. can learn a lot today. Sorry. <laughs> really, Matthias? Yeah. <laughs> to this topic i never uh, yeah I, i i never consider the the earnings reports in detail okay so how did you do when you when you were trading earnings you were purely looking at the price no i'm just trading the numbers yeah just okay. the math just yeah okay so if you are a bit more fundamentally interested in your companies <laughs> then <laughs> then you you should pay attention to these reports um, we also have a big course on Tradimo on how to understand all of the numbers. Um, maybe Matthias can share it in the in the in the notes. Um, basically, yeah. So let's let's take a look at this. You get this by going to the investor uh, to the investor relations part of the website. So if you just type in investor relations and then the company that you're interested in investing in, they have such a section on their website and you can enter your email address to immediately get all news of this company immediately when they are released. Basically, the company is legally obliged to um, to send this to all people at the same time. So they can't send it to me first and then to Matthias, because of course then I could already tell him, ah, don't you want to sell your shares for me to me for this <laughs> price? <laughs> and Matthias is like, ah, oh, I don't know. I wanted to wait for the results, but if he makes me such a good offer, and then one minute later he realizes maybe that the company made a 50% profit increase and that uh, the shares are going to go up 10%, and I just bought them from him for much cheaper. So that's all that's all possible. Um, well, basically not possible because it's released at the same time. Um, 
and then, yeah, I, I received this here, for example, via email today, immediately when it was released. And then I took a look here. So um, you can also take a look first at how the stock is moving. So if you type in GLW stock, then you can see the price as well. And you can see that right now it's basically at $31. And yesterday it closed at $30 something. So the stock has gone up. Um, come back to that in a moment. Yeah, so pre-market right now, before the market has even opened, people are willing to pay more for the company now because of these results. Yeah? That's what happens when a company delivers good results, typically, <laughs> but we'll come to yeah, the exceptions in a moment. <laughs> so <laughs> um, that's where the stock market is really crazy, I can tell you. So let's let's take a brief look at this. Third quarter results, so it's always per quarter. The company releases the result typically every couple of months and so so four times uh, three times per year uh, four times per year so yeah. it's always every three months you have the the results and here now the third quarter is over so the third quarter basically ended um, with at the end of September and now uh, they released the results so all the companies that are on the stock market are now in October or November or latest December releasing the results for the third quarter and um, so yeah that is one of the big drivers of the stock. And now here we can see the year over year gap and core sales up 4% and 6% to 2.6 and 2.7 billion respectively. So mm -hmm. means basically that the profit has gone up. The earnings per share, so if you break it down into how much money was made for each shareholder per share, were 39 cents and 43 cents. So the stock, if we go here back to the Google result, which is you kind of stuck. Okay, anyways, the the um, stock price is around thirty one dollars at the moment. Yeah, so basically, yeah, um, one percent of that is kind of the profit that the company is making. Yeah, and this is just in this quarter. So basically, over the f over four quarters, you can say that the company makes four percent profit for you if if it was the same result um, every year, yeah? which is or at the moment at least, which is kind of cool. Um, mm -hmm. <laughs> and then there's here the different segments that they want to highlight. So keep in mind, this is written by the company. So if the CEO has kind of uh, wants to emphasize something here, he can do it. And he's emphasizing here the 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 year over year sales increase in optical communications and specialty materials. Those are actually the two only interesting segments of this company, I can tell you. Um, the one when you, when they say optical communications, that's the 5G networks and uh, like specialized fiber cables to make um, different internet connections and so on really fast. That's in high demand from them. And 26% specialty materials, that's the Gorilla Glass that is used in all the iPhones and also all the Samsung devices. Most likely you are a customer of this company without knowing it. <laughs> <laughs> I'm pretty sure. <laughs> yeah. yeah. Um, and of course, they're kind of excited because the next iPhone has glass on both sides. So that's why this company could see a lot of growth. Um, so it's ahead of management expectations. Yeah? That's, of course, a nice trick. Like the management always has kind of the task of making the expectations of the market a little bit lower than what they know they will deliver so that they can each time deliver positive results. But of course, yeah, if they always do this, then people start having larger expectations than what they say. Yeah, because people, most people in the financial markets are not super stupid. Um, and then uh, here we can basically learn a bit more of the company. Like it would now go be a bit too much to go through the whole six pages, but um, basically the results, then you can see the financial results and what is typically reported in the market then uh, when you, when you look on, yeah, on, in, when you look basically on Twitter or so for what people are saying about this company, then the the number that they will typically tweet is um, the by how much the company has beaten earnings. Yeah? So the earnings expectations, they mean with that. So here the headline that comes out, um, not from not from this um, news release, but when you look at the company um, at the company news itself, uh, like when what is said in the markets, basically, if I look here, um, it says, for example, um, Corning t 
tops Q3 earnings per share by two cent. Yeah? So we have here, basically it said 39 and 43 cents was were the earnings per share. And that's the number that everyone was looking at of the analysts and they expected 37 cents or 41 cents. And now it's more. Yeah? And that's why then people are reacting positively. And right now the stock is up 4%. It's at $31.20. Yeah? And yesterday it was just at $30. So that's basically what this result has done. Now sometimes what happens is that people sell the company anyways because they think that this is the best it's going to get and that they should rather take their profit now. Sell on good news. Yeah. Also known. So that's, yeah, sell on good news. So basically people wait for the result and when it's good and some people are willing to pay more, then they start selling to those people. And then it can be that more people jump on, on board of that behavior and then suddenly the stock goes down even though you thought this is, these are great results. And that's why it can be dangerous, and I've made this mistake plenty of times myself, to <laughs> <laughs> buy more and more shares when the results are good. So you see this, you're already convinced of the company and you think, wow, I should buy more shares because yeah, it's, it's everything I believed about this company is true. And now other people are seeing it as well, and the price is going up, and I want to make more money because I'm right. And then but maybe this uh, is a good approach for a long-term trader. So if you want to invest in this company and yeah. not just trading it, then it's a good good spot to to buy more. Yeah, it depends, of course, on how much more you buy. Like if you buy course, a lot, a lot, a lot, so that you then when it starts going down five percent, just because some people are taking their profit, you have a problem. Then you have bought too many. So that's basically, yeah, I would say like some important lessons to learn about um, this type of earnings releases and how to handle them. Yeah, that's uh, just something I thought would be interesting to yeah. discuss with all of you. And, Very interesting. Um, Thank you, Sebastian. Yeah, cool. <laughs> Happy to I hear that. <laughs> really? Okay. Yes, yes, really. Uh, I'm, I'm really positively surprised. <laughs> 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 yeah. Um, for if yeah if Tritimo ever becomes a stock listed company this will be very interesting to uh, think about what we want to emphasize and so on like then we would say and like, what you this, want to mention as a ceo in yeah, the earnings report yeah. <laughs> yeah, yeah i mean here you can see like yeah this chairman chief executive officer wendell p weeks said we had an excellent third quarter we are outperforming on sales, seeing the first returns on near-term growth investments and making great progress on our long-term growth initiatives. Like they will always say something like this, even if the results <laughs> are not great. But um, sometimes, sometimes they also take a bit of a more critical statement. And that's then when the stock can go down a lot. So I've seen another company that is uh, actually delivering quite well or has tripled its stock price over the last couple of months and years. Um, Kion in the German market, for example, and after some critical remarks, it went from 80, do 80 euros to 60 euros. So this, of course, can also happen. Yeah. Mm -hmm. My most traumatic experience once was with Zynga. And maybe some of you know this company. Um, I know it. Yeah, so it's basically this uh, social social games um, company, and uh, it really went down 50 percent uh, and within five minutes after the results were wow. were released so that it's uh, I, I find it really yeah strange that this that you can present such radically different results after the market is closed and then um, none of these protection mechanisms come into place normally during the day uh, during when you're trading during the day the stock doesn't go down more than 20 percent because then um, short selling at least gets disallowed but if simply from one moment to the next nobody's willing to pay that price anymore to a company for a company's shares um, overnight it can be really traumatic yeah. Mm -hmm. but yeah you know, on the bright side it can also happen in the other direction of course so um, with, with Nvidia for example we have seen plenty of times earnings results where then the stock went up 15% and then 15% the day after that and so on so it's, it can be really exciting, but mostly uh, that's now the final piece of advice here. Unless it's a pharma, a pharmaceutical company like a biotechnology company, they can often go up a hundred percent or so if the if they suddenly get um, you know a, a, a medical new license, patent. a new patent or something. Um, other than that, companies normally go down a lot more when the results are bad than they go up when the results are good. So. Um, it it 
or basically faster. Um, so faster. when when the results are good, it can be that um, the stock goes up for the next week or the next month, every day a little bit. But when the results are bad, then most of the move usually happens within the first three days. Uh, I mean, yeah. these are now, it's not scientific what I'm saying, but um, based on my experience of the stock market in the last few years, this is uh, something that is that can be observed quite frequently. I absolutely agree. I can confirm that. Yeah, It's, it's so uh, down further and, and yeah. faster than, than to the upside. So this is maybe why I'm a little bear. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. I love falling prices. <laughs> Basically, I find it then interesting to buy companies with good results after they have gone down a little bit if people are taking their profit or if it continues to go up more than to jump on board of it. So mm -hmm. that's um, yeah, what you can do if you're a bull. Yeah. If you're a bear, then you can go short before these results and then um, yeah, just use a small enough position so that it doesn't ruin you if the results are great. Yeah, and that's what yeah. Matthias is doing. So you see yeah, both approaches... Good. Both approaches are perfectly viable and it's just important that you have a plan and do it in the mm -hmm. way that you really want to. Yeah, more about that at Tradermo. And um, if you want a proper plan where Matthias helps you do this properly, then uh, sign up at Tradermo.com slash premium. Okay. Okay, Thank that's you. it from us for today. Have a good okay, one. Okay, see you tomorrow, guys. Bye. Bye.